So have you been considering getting a instrument cluster or mini dash screen for your Tesla Model 3 or Y? Well, I've got a solution for you. TestLogic sent me out this module right here. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's only got one plug. There's not much to it. There's just the module and this small little cable. And it takes about five minutes to install. And what that allows you to do is now have a dash screen like the mini screen behind your steering wheel. And there's no wires between that. It Bluetooth to this module right here. And so there's nothing else to install. It takes like five minutes, 10 minutes at most. Uh, all you have to do is uh, for the installation is take the uh, kick panel off on the passenger side and then disconnect a small white plug and then go ahead and put the splitter in between that. And then you take the large white plug from the cable and then you plug that into the blue spot and then plug in the module into the last spot on that cable. And then all you gotta do is hide that uh, module just underneath the carpet, put everything back together, and then the installation is complete. So that takes about five minutes. Once you've done that, you install the software from the App Store. Uh, it's both iPhone and Android compatible, so it works really well with both. I've, I've tried it both on the uh, iPhone 13 Pro as well as the S23 and they function exactly the same. If you're interested in purchasing the TestLogic module, um, I've got a discount code for you. It's beastly Tesla guy. It's down in the description. That'll save you 10%. Anyway, let's get into it. So now that we got that installed, uh, that took like five minutes at most, it's really just plugging in the module, and then I had to go ahead and install the software. Again, you can get it from the iOS or Android App Store. Just look up Test Logic and install it. When you launch that app, it's going to go and look for that module, and then once it sees it, it's going to say connected. Very straightforward. If it goes into demo mode, which it did for me the first time, all I had to do was turn off my phone and then restart the phone and then launch the app and that seemed to fix it. And then every time after that, you just get into your car, launch the app and it automatically connects. But anyway, let's go ahead and we'll take a look at it. So the screens that we have available to us are, there are five screens plus a configuration screen. So let's go ahead and go through each of these. So we have the uh, phone. I mounted it on the steering wheel. You can see right there that I've got it mounted. And um, there's a power cable that goes down. It runs along here, and then it's back down there. So again, that's the wireless uh, charger that they have that's uh, available that I'm using. And then you can just put your phone there. Even if you don't want to use the app, you can use this as a, a charging spot for your phone. So it's an additional charging spot. So anyway, what we're gonna do is, I just wanna point out that you can scroll between the screens using your hands, like just manually like this, or you can use this wheel right here, and we just go back and forth like that through the screens. And then if you get to the, about this Tesla or about your car information page, you can't go any further left, but if you swipe, this is the only one that you have to swipe, this gets you into the uh, setup of the device. Now, there's only one change that I made, which is under battery and range. And what I did was turn on the battery temperature. For me, it's interesting to know what the temperature of the battery is. And I'll show you where that actually shows up. Another part that's interesting for some people is the range calculation, I have it set so Tesla is actually point, giving the indications, but I can turn that on here and that'll allow Tesla's logic to dictate what it shows for that range. So I'm gonna put theirs on there and I'll point that out. So again, we're just gonna go to the next screen. So this is the about page for your uh, Tesla uh, setup. It's gonna give you the name that you gave it when you installed the uh, uh, software. It also tells you when it was built. So it was built, my car was built December 21st, 2021. I actually picked it up 10 days later. 
So the turnaround time at Fremont's really quick. You can see that right here, I'm actually uh, coming on to 15,000 kilometers on my, or miles on my car. And then if we go to car info, you can see I'm on hardware three. Um, it says that I have 524 uh, horsepower. So in battery information, it shows that uh, I've actually done 81 full charge cycles on my car and that my degradation is 8.9%, which I think that's about right. And if we go to energy, it just shows um, all the stats. So this is just basically a stats page. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the right. So this, this page here, it's actually the track mode. So on the left-hand side is G-forces. So if you're like accelerating, it'll show you the acceleration in g-forces as well as when you're stopping in the center is like the it, in the center it will show you your speed and then your zero to so we're looking yeah this is in miles so zero to 40 i'm not sure why it should be it should be zero to 30 should be zero to 30 zero to 60 is fine quarter mile is fine and then maximum horsepower so under full acceleration what is the horsepower that you actually got to and then it shows you over on the right how much horsepower you're using right at that time. And below that, you're actually gonna see um, what is the battery temperature and if you're being limited. So if you're leaving it out at night and it's at a low state of charge, it will say that it's limited. So we'll go into the next screen. This is the energy page. So when you're seeing yellow, that's energy going out and green is where it's going so the center one is the actual battery and you can see right now that other is using energy so that's like the monitor charging headlights anything that's in the car using energy outside of the normal stuff so that's typically there if I go ahead and I turn on the heats heated seats you'll see the heated seat now says 0.2 kilowatts so I've done quite a bit of testing on this and it does use about 2.2 kilowatts for the seat. So if I put on the passenger seat one on high, it should go up to 0.3 or 4. So there you, there you go right there. If I turn it off, it goes off. If I turn on climate control, okay, so I, I just turned on the fans to high as well as the heat to high and you can see it's using quite a bit of energy. If I put it on air conditioning, I think the energy drops quite a bit. So it uses a lot more energy heating the car than it does cooling the car. Okay, so I just turned off that uh, climate control. You can see it's not using anything. I, ha I do have available, if I go and navigate to a supercharger, so let's go and do that. Charging, I'm navigating to a supercharger. You can see right away, it's starting to heat up the battery and it's actually turned on climate control. So um, you can see that the front motor and the rear motor are now engaged in using energy and that waste energy is converted to heat and transferred to the batteries. So you can see, I can actually turn on all the power right now and we're using 7.3 kilowatts just sitting here, which is quite a bit. So anyway, um, the best way to explain this screen is everything that everything that turns green is using energy and anything that's yellow is giving up energy. So when you regen, the motors will turn the orange yellow color. And we'll sh I'll show you that when we go for a drive. Anyway, um, let's go ahead to the next screen. So this is your main screen. On the main screen, right cent, uh, dead center is what gear you're in. Um, over on the left-hand side, it tells you your maximum horsepower and the current horsepower that you're utilizing. It does tell you how much energy you have saved, which is pretty cool, and how much uh, kilowatts you're using currently. So let's see if we go back, is it 11? It is. So it's 11.5, 11.6. 
it's really starting to spin up out there as I'm warming up the battery for supercharging. So we're at like 12 point. So what does it say over here? It does say 12. On the right hand side of your speed, it's going to show the estimated range that you're going to get driving in the city or on the highway, as well as you've got your trip odometer and your average speed in miles per hour. Now it does show at the top right, it shows 84%. That's the state of charge of the battery right now. So anyway, let's go for a drive. Um, one thing I didn't point out was down on the very bottom, there's a red bar. So when you hit the brake, it actually shows up there. And again, when you signal to the left, it will show on the screen that you're turning left or right. So let's go for a drive. And I'm going to put it in the battery to start. So you can see right now I've got climate control, just got air conditioning on uh, very low, just so it stays cool in here. And as I drive forward, and I'm just driving in a parking lot right now, the rear motor is actually engaged. So it only has the rear motor engaged at this point, and I'm just driving around the parking lot. Now, as soon as I let off the throttle, you can see that the rear, the front motor is actually doing regen. So again, anytime you see that it goes into the yellow color, that's actually regen. Or it's giving up energy is I think the easiest way to think of it is the front motor is giving up energy. Okay, so we'll just get out of this parking lot. Now, when I use this, I've had this thing for a couple weeks now. I really love this thing. Um, really want to do an extensive uh, use of it before re doing a review. So it works really well. I, I love how this thing gives you all the details, much more detail than you would get from um, any of the other type of displays. So you can see right now, it's actually using energy again anything green is using energy so that's the back motor is using energy and then if i let off the throttle it's giving back energy so that's the regen part and actually there for a blink it actually did both okay so i'm going to show you what the um g-force thing does so i'm going to accelerate off the line here and you should see the yellow or sorry you should see the red dot actually move okay so up here i'm going to merge into the lane so you can see right now i can't so I either got to go ahead of this person or go behind. So there you go. That's That showed you the red. Okay, so I'm going to go down this hill here. And you can see, because I'll just be using a lot of regen here. So right now, um, the rear motor is giving energy. Now, if I just completely let off on the steep part right here that's coming up. And let it bring me to a complete stop. Let's see what happens. So we've got energy coming from the rear motor. So we're just going to compare the quarter mile to what I get from Draggy. So let's go ahead and see what we got. Zero to 60. And this is a valid run from Draggy. So in comparison. So if we do zero to 40, it says 2.4. Draggy says... Oh, sorry, 2.49, Draggy says 2.39. So one-tenth of a second out. Uh, zero to 60, it says 3.93 seconds. And Draggy has 3.85 seconds. Pretty accurate, 3.85 seconds to 3.93.
So 0 0.07, 0 0.08 of a second off. So less than a tenth of a second. So it's pretty accurate. I've had the test logic module now for a couple of weeks. Uh, wanted to do a thorough test on it. And what I can say is I find it very useful. Great replacement for one of those instrument clusters or mini screens that you can purchase for your Tesla Model 3 or Y. Another thing I really like is that blind spot detection. Um, the only thing I wish it had was maybe a bit of a noise notification. That'd be pretty cool if uh, it made a noise as well as flashing red, but uh, maybe some people wouldn't want that. Anyway, um, if you're interested in purchasing the Test Logic, there's a link in the description. And again, use my discount code BC Tesla guy. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching.